Hello everyone and welcome to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Hello, I'm Sarah Amos, thank you for joining me again. Um, just as a preface to this um, particular video, uh, we are a country in mourning with our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth II lying in state in Westminster Hall in London before her funeral on Monday next week. So as I'm filming, uh, we are in a period of mourning in England. Um, sorry, I should say in the United Kingdom and the nations and the Commonwealth are in mourning. Um, so a slightly sombre um, tone to this week's video. So I must say thank you so much um, to all of my YouTube watchers who have sent a little note to say that they're sorry for the loss of our Queen. So it means a lot to us. Um, you know, she was very much loved. She had a 70 year reign, which has is unprecedented in the history of the monarchy of our country. So it's it really is something that has been a, an absolutely major achievement. And um, we welcome in King Charles III. Um, but at the moment, as I say, we are in a period of mourning for our Queen. OK, so today we're going to do a glaze kiln fire opening. So uh, what's in the kiln? Well, there are more basket bases. Uh, there are a couple of bits and pieces of mine, but not very many, but mostly students work. So we'll uh, get the lid open. The kiln is cold. It was cold last night. Um, and we'll get on and see what we've got. Right, okay, and are we all going to sing with me? I have had a sneaky peek. I have had a sneaky peek. Yes, I have, just, just a small one, just the sneakiest of sneakies. Uh, so on the top shelf in this kiln is another of um, Brian and Nikki's basket bases from Willow and Yoga. This one, um, I can't actually remember whose it was. I think it might have been Brian's. Um, has been done with a beautiful um, roller with this sort of cow parsley design on. Now, this glaze, I have I had my um, reservations about it before, is Jessica Putnam Phillips Clayscapes Cobblestone. Now, I will say that when Brian applied it, it was a bit of a funny consistency, and I have sieved some of it. Um, but actually, despite that, I actually quite like that finish. So um, whilst it isn't perhaps exactly as I would have hoped it came out, actually, I don't mind it. Um, but I think um, looking on the uh, website for my supplier for Jessica Putnam Phillips's um, glazes, she appears not to be doing any more brush on. So I'm assuming that there has been some form of a problem with the brush on glazes. So um, when I rebuy this cobblestone, I will buy it in a dipping glaze if I think that the students are going to use it enough. But nonetheless, that's a lovely basket base. And as I've said on many kiln openings before, because we've had quite a few of these come through, I'll definitely share the making, um, the basket making process with you so you can see these when they're finished. Okay, so first level down, um, the first thing is another one of Janet's um, pieces for the window. So again, on the last sort of few kiln openings that we've done, there have been panels for the window that Janet has been working on. Uh, this one is spring. Um, lots of different techniques on here. So we've got glaze, underglaze, um, an underglaze transfer, um, and um, Janet's unique way of appliquing um, items onto a slab using glaze so she literally puts a little dob of glaze underneath the pieces and then sticks them on um, so there is uh, the under glaze on here is um, Amico's wasabi but she has sponged under glazes and I know that she is um, going to be slightly disappointed with this section here because obviously she wanted it to be darker for the tree um, section which has been done with a ceramica transfers underglaze 
uh, transfer. This um, blue part, which actually is bluebells, which actually does look like bluebells, is um, Mako's blue hydrangea. And I think she may have dotted on a few dots of darker blue underglaze. So again, when Janet has finished this piece, lots of you have said, can we have a picture? So yes, when it's finished, I'll, I'll certainly post a picture so that you can see it in its finished form. There's a half shelf in here, so I'll get that out. Right, next out, uh, this is um, a test acorn uh, made by Kathy. So she's got two large acorns that have come through the bisque firing and we're just about to start the glazing process of those tomorrow. Um, so she's done a little sample and this is such a good idea if you're working on a big project to actually make something in miniature to try your glazes on before you commit on your larger pieces. Um, so this section here is uh, Amico's Marigold um, with Amico's Saturation Gold on the cup part. Uh, which actually is a really nice combination. And then on the quarters, we've got Amico's um, oatmeal on this section here. And then this on here is red iron oxide with no glaze over the top. So it's gone this nice sort of toasty bronzy colour, which is actually really nice. So that's just, as I say, that's Cathy testing her pieces just to see which glaze combination she wants to put on it. Um, but by the same token, she's made it very decorative so she can still use it. So that's on craft crank clay, which is the clay we use to go outside in the garden. So she'll be pleased with that. Uh, that was sat, because it had saturation gold on it, on a little cookie with little tiny kiln stilts. Um, there is a video on the channel of how to make your own kiln stilts, so um, have a look at that if you're interested. Uh, next out of here one of my mugs now um if you watch the the chill out um video you'll have seen me putting the transfers on here um and this is again it's a ceramica transfer um and it's the planets and i'm making a series of mugs which i will share with you um but this one says one giant leap for mankind um glaze on the inside is um mako's night moth isn't that lovely? So it looks like a starry sky, which is why I picked it. Really nice, really happy with that. Um, that's a lovely mug and I'm, uh, I'll share with you where it's going later on. Um, okay, so um, the luminaires, these are the two original, two of the original luminaires that I made. The three that we made in the most recent um, tutorial are waiting for bisque firing. Um, so this one is Paris, um, and if you haven't seen, there's a two-part how to make this uh, luminaire, how to make a skyline luminaire. I'll put the link up for you and I'll pop it on the end of the video. Um, so there is a template on my Etsy shop of, of how to make this particular piece. So do go along to the Etsy shop, links in the description below. So this one is Paris. Um, and the idea is to put some little votive candles on the shelf uh, and light it at night so that the, the light shines through. And this one is a London. So there is the London skyline and there are cutouts on the shoulders. Uh, these two, may I say, are already sold. So if you were thinking of asking me if you could buy them, unfortunately, uh, well, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, my lovely sister-in-law, Laurie, hello Laurie, um, has asked her mother, who's staying with us at the moment, to bring them back for her. So I shall have to make sure that I wrap those up very carefully and uh, send them over to the States. Right, last thing on this particular shelf is um, Lisa's planter. This is lovely, this is really nice. So this is a slab built planter, as you can see. Um, which she wants for her kitchen window. So she's measured her kitchen window, worked out that three pots will fit in here. Clever girl. Um, and the glaze combination, this is Amico's Ice, which is just almost like clear, but with a slight blue tinge. This is a... Is it an Ellen Transfers? I think it's an Ellen Transfers underglaze transfer in black. And she's used the same Mako Night Moth I hope you can pick that up 
on the camera. It really is a lovely glaze. It's really pretty. So it's got a almost blue black background with these sort of crystal formations on. It's a really lovely glaze. I really like it. So I hope you can pick that up from the uh, from the lights and from the uh, from the tilt. So that's a lovely piece. Lisa will be pleased with that. And no cracks. Very nicely made. Well done, Lisa. I'll get the shelf out. OK, so in this layer, we have more um, basket bases of um, Willow and Yoga. Right, this one I know Nikki made and she's not going to be happy because it appears we have more cracking. So there's a great big crack right the way across the middle of this piece. Um, it has transferred to the front of the piece. Um, it does actually ring just about um, but again I'm sure that Nikki will probably make it into a basket it's a shame but unfortunately large and flat things are dodgy and you know if the preparation of the slab is not perhaps as it should be this is what happens the background glaze on here is Amoco Pear remembering that it's on this craft crank clay so it does come out a slightly different colour and then she's used copper oxide on the fern stamp detail. So that is another basket base. I think there's, there's one more basket base to get through the kiln. So we're getting there. Okay, next shelf, we've got um, another basket base just for change. This one much more successful. I can't remember whose this is. It might be Brian's. Um, so that is using a pastry made roller with this fern leaf pattern on, very nice. And the glaze on there is um, one of my favourites, Amoco Rainforest. Is it one of your favourites? Great glaze that, always, always comes out lovely. So yeah, really nice Amoco glaze. That's one of the Celadon glaze range. So it's kind of like a shiny see-through glaze and it shows up texture so lovely. That's really pretty. So that will make a lovely basket. And in the very bottom of this kiln, whoo, oh dear. Yes, right, okay. Again, this is one of Nikki's and this one's even worse than the last one. Right, let's get it out, see if I can lift it out. As I say, I think probably the problem was not compressing the clay when it was in its um, slab form. So yeah, nasty, nasty crack on this one right the way through. I will be surprised if this actually makes it through many days before it departs from itself. Um, so it's a shame because this is a lovely one. Um, actually, it's not Nikki's, I'm lying, it's Brian's. Um, this is wasabi, so Amoco's wasabi with copper oxide on the stamp detail again. But that is not going to make it into a basket because it's far far too far gone which is a real shame and that my friends is your lot for today so before we sign out a few shout outs as normal um just put my glasses on can't see glasses about um you'll remember that um a couple of um glaze openings ago perhaps uh, june mccabe sent sent me her dishes using the textured stamps that she'd bought from my etsy shop this is the final piece, so it's nice to see it finished, June. Thank you for sending me that. Um, and it actually really, really come out lovely. Lovely, really nice. Um, and then this one is from Diane Angelo. Uh, and she says, I purchased a wonky pot template from you on Etsy and have made several wonky pots. They are so fun to make, thank you. Uh, the attached photos are of one I put my own spin on and I have to say it's my favourite so far. Thank you for your great tutorials, I love them all. So Diana's um, Wonky Pot, this is terrific. So she's used the Wonky Pot template, which again is available in the Etsy shop. I love the feet. I think she's done a really good job there. It looks like she's used some form of flower cutter and just built the feet up with different sized flower cutters. I, I mean, I'm sure she'll tell us if that's wrong, but that's what it looks like. But a lovely wonky with lovely texture, really nice. And a great glaze, really nice little thing. And with a succulent or a cactus or 
some form of plant in there it's going to look terrific so thank you very much Diane for sending me that I appreciate you taking the time to um, send me a picture of your work well that's your lot gang um, do pop me a message if there's any questions that you have I'm always happy to answer those and I'm very grateful to you for joining me again for another Glaze Kiln Fire opening and I'll see you all on the next video bye for now